Among the popular features of many newspapers are advice columns. Readers send questions to the columnists who then provide answers. We like to get answers to our problems. If someone's able to suggest a quick fix to them, we're happy. It has always been that way and probably always will. Various people came to John the Baptizer in the desert to get advice. He gave it. He told the crowd in general to share. He told tax collectors, a notoriously corrupt group in his time, to be honest. He told soldiers to not abuse their power by abusing people. We're not told how they reacted to John's advice, but since group after group asked for it, we can assume that folks liked what he had to say. We can be less sure that they actually followed it. My own experience of giving and receiving advice makes me suspect that they did not. Apparently, the people who heard John were looking for something other than advice. Otherwise, they would have followed it, and the world would be a different place. Equally apparent is the fact that I am not really looking for advice, though I may listen to talks, read books, and scan articles, which I then ignore. I have some other desire, a desire symbolized by my hopeful search for good advice. What are we really looking for? Answers? or an answer. Occasionally, we see signs or hear people who say, Jesus is the answer. The irreverent comeback is, of course, what's the question? Well, what is the question? What am I looking for? What is the desire? I think it is a special kind of relationship. Perhaps that is the real meaning of those Jesus is the answer declarations. John offered advice. The one who came after, who was mightier than John, seldom offered advice. Frequently we see him ignoring requests for advice. Instead, he invites people to a new kind of relationship with God and other people. A common question at this time of year is, what do you want for Christmas? When I was a child, my father used to reply, all I want is some well-behaved kids. We always found it easier to give him a necktie. The Lord asks each of us the same question, what do you want for Christmas? His asking frees me from the necessity of thinking of one more thing that will clutter my life. I can turn to him and say, Lord, all I want is to know you, to know how close to me you are, how much you love me. It's a cliche in Advent and Christmas time to mouth wishes for world peace, but the Lord does not even offer that. What he offers is himself. If we really accept that gift, we will find peace. The acceptance is the key. When John offered advice, people could accept it or reject it and carry on with their lives. If they accepted it, they became nicer people and the world became a nicer place. Nicer, that's all. It remained the same old world. If we become nicer, the world would still be the same old world. The Lord comes to clear it all away. His winnowing fan is in his hand to clear his threshing floor. The Lord offers something totally new, totally different. He offers a world where advice is not needed, where our baptism in the Holy Spirit and in fire will make of us a new creation. What we really want has already been given us. We do not have to wait until Christmas Day to receive it. We do not have to wait until we start following all the good advice we have received. We can spend our lives looking for John the Baptizer, looking for the right advice, the right rules, the right morality by which to live. Or we can accept the Christmas gift offered us at every moment, the loving presence of Jesus Christ the Lord.